Hello, it's Thursday. So I've just gotten back from spending a couple of days down on my parents' farm where I grew up. So don't be surprised if you see a cow pattern in the near future. But for today, we're going to be making a griffin. Let's get into it. Okay, so here is the little griffin that we're going to be making today. And the wings might look familiar to you. That is because a couple of weeks ago, we made the little Pegasus. And at the time I did mention that the wings were from a griffin that I just hadn't finished fully resolving yet. So we are going to be making the griffin. And I might be releasing these two as a pattern bundle just because I think they really go together. Let me know in the comments who would make up the third member of this little band. Okay, let's talk about tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in at least two colors, but I'm going to be using three. So what I've got here is an eagle color, a lion color, and then a beak and feet color. So those are my three. You're also going to need a pair of nine millimeter safety eyes. Now I've chosen nine millimeter because they're the same size we used on the Pegasus. However, I have also made this pattern with 18 millimeter safety eyes and it still works out. So kind of eye size is a little bit up to personal preference. You will also need your 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it. A written version of today's pattern will be posted on my Patreon as well as listed on my Etsy. I will leave links in the description down below for anybody who is interested. Okay, so first up to make our griffin today, we are going to start by making his little ears. By making them first, we're going to be able to join them in the round as we work up the head later. So we're going to start by grabbing our eagle color and I'm going to work up a magic ring of six. Like so. I'm then gonna do just two rounds of six single crochet. So that's 12 stitches in total. So just like that. So you'll see that we're just making this tiny little kind of floop. Oh yes, that is a technical term. And finish off. So we have an open end and a closed end. So the closed end will face up and then the open end is what we're going to attach in the round. I'm going to trim my tail off fairly shortly. Just tuck that down inside. Then I'm just gonna do a little bit of crochet magic. There we go. Pop them to one side for now, but don't put them too far away because you will need them pretty soon. So from there, we're gonna move on to make the rest of this headpiece. And there's sort of a couple of things to note about it. So the first thing to note is that we do attach the ears in the round. Then a little while later, what we'll be doing is working the back loop only to leave the front loops free. And then later on in those front loops, we'll be building that beak directly onto the head. So we don't have to sew that on either. Then as we work down, we'll be working up a little flat panel that ends up forming this chest. It will all make sense as we go through it. So grabbing your eagle color once again, we're going to start by working two rows to get up to 12 stitches around. So that is a magic ring of six single crochet. And then six repeats of an increase into each stitch. So just like that, we have the top of the head. So now we're actually gonna grab our ears and we'll be attaching those in the next row. So one thing to note about the ears before we get started is that there should be six stitches left in that opening. And how it's going to work is we're going to work through three of those stitches to attach it to the top of the head. And then the other three stitches will form the outer row that we end up working around in subsequent rows. So in the first three stitches of round three, we're going to attach our first ear. So there is no right or wrong way to line your ears up, but the way I'm going to do it is just line up the next three stitches of the ear with the next three stitches of the head so that the ear is sitting on the right side of the work, which for me is the side facing me. I am then going to work my hook through one stitch of the ear and one stitch of the head. So you'll see there I'm working through both stitches and then work a single crochet. So that's the first stitch and I'm gonna do that two more times. So one stitch of the ear, one stitch of the head, then one stitch of the ear and one stitch of the head. So there is our first ear attached. I'm now going to work four increases to get around to where we want to put the second ear. So 
like so. Then I'm going to grab my second ear and again just line up three stitches of it against the next three stitches of the head and once again work single crochets by inserting your hook through the ear and the head. We are then going to finish that row by working two increases. So that's what we should look like at the end of row 18. So that's what we should look like at the end of row three. So we should have both of our little ears attached. You can see them there. Each of them is attached along three stitches and should have three stitches free along their outer edge. And you should have worked 18 stitches in total. Now in the next row, rather than working along these stitches here, we'll actually be working around the outside of the ears for those three stitches instead. Your row count is gonna stay the same because all we're doing is trading the three stitches we attach to the head for the three stitches around the outside. So the first stitch will fall in the first available stitch of your first ear. And we're going to start by working an increase. I'm then going to work 12 single crochet around. So the first two will fall into the outer edge of the first ear. So that's one and two. We should then have eight across the increases we did in the previous round. So we've done 10 of the 12 stitches and then the final two are going to fall in the first two stitches of our second ear. In the last remaining stitch of that ear, we are going to put an increase. And then we are going to work four single crochet once again into the increases we did last row. So there we are at the end of row four. So you should go ahead now and work the next two rows to finish shaping the forehead. So there's the top of your griffin's head. Now over the next three rows, what we're going to be doing is laying the foundation for us to build the beak onto later. So what I'm gonna suggest you do is, if you have them available, grab a couple of bobby pins, or you can use a piece of scrap yarn for the same purpose. But I just, I just personally find bobby pins kind of easier for what I'm about to do. I guess stitch markers would also work, but uh, bobby pins are good because they've got that nice long straight edge and we're going to be using them to mark columns of stitches. So we're going to start this row by working nine single crochet. Just normally, nothing special there, like so. And what that should do is bring you around to so that the next three stitches are relatively centered between our two little ear puffs. And what I'm going to do is work in the back loop only for those three stitches. So work three single crochet in the back loop only. So that's the side of the stitch furthest away from me. And what you'll notice that does, it leaves the front loops free so that I can work into them later. And so that will be where the top of the beak is sitting. So what I'm going to do is just grab my bobby pin and mark that stitch. So I'm gonna slip it through the front loop of the stitch in the previous row and the front loop of the stitch we just did because we'll only be working in the back loop for that one there too. So I'm gonna mark those two there. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So there'll be the two in the middle that I'm not marking. I'm just marking the ones on the edges. So each of those bobby pins is attached to two front loops. Of them. I'm then going to complete that row with 12 single crochet around back to the start. Like so, so I'm back to the start there. So row two of the beak building rows, we are going to once again work nine single crochet back around to where our beak is, like so. I'm going to work the next stitch as a single crochet into the back loop only. Then the middle stitch is worked through both loops, single crochet. And then the next stitch is once again through the back loop only. And what I'm going to do at this point is adjust my bobby pin so that they're picking up the front loops of the two stitches on either side of what we just did there as well. So currently each bobby pin or piece of scrap yarn is marking three front loops for you. Now that is basically where we're going to attach our beak. It doesn't get any bigger than that, but we are just going to lock it in by working one final row. Uh, first, we just need to work 12 single crochet to get back to the end of this row though. 
And in the third row of building the beak foundation, we are going to work nine single crochet again to get back around to where our beak is. And then work three single crochet in the back loops only. And then 12 single crochet back around to our starting point. Like so. So at this point, I am just going to flip my bobby pins around so they're not like knocking against me every time I work a stitch. But what you should be able to see there is a series of eight front loops that form this little square. So there's like a stitch in the middle that's worked through both loops and but we've got three along the top then one and then three along the bottom and then one. So that is kind of the form your front loop should take on the front of your griffin. And that will be relevant once we've finished actually working up this headpiece. So you'll now work the next three rows to finalize the shape of the head. Okay, so we have worked down to the base of the neck on our griffin, as you should be able to see when I line them up there. So the next thing we're going to be doing is building out this curve to the chest, which is done by working backwards and forwards and chaining one and turning at the end of each row. So we are going to start by working 24 single crochet around, just as per normal. So you'll note that, that brings us to level roughly with under this second ear and it will leave you with four stitches left unworked but that's fine we're going to skip those and instead we are going to chain one and turn and working back into the stitches that we've just done we're going to work a decrease then four repeats of two single crochet and an increase then two single crochet and a decrease to finish the row. So there's the final decrease. And note that we, again, are not going the whole way around, but instead stopping to form this little arc. And we're going to chain one and turn. So we're going to just keep working backwards and forwards along that curve. Oh, let me turn that so you can actually see. So we're gonna keep working backwards and forwards along that curve to build it up to a little bit of a point. So in the next row, we're going to decrease, work 16 single crochet around, and then decrease in the last two stitches. Chain one and turn. We're going to start this row with two decreases. And then we're going to do three repeats of two single crochet and a decrease. Leaving us with two stitches in the round and we're going to work a decrease into those as well chain one and turn. We are going to work a decrease, eight single crochet, and then a decrease, chain one and turn, only four more rows to go. Work two decreases, two single crochet, and then two decreases. chain one and turn. Now we only have six stitches left in our row and in them we are going to put a decrease, two single crochet, and a decrease, bringing us down to four stitches across, chain one and turn, work two decreases, chain one and turn, and in the last two stitches, we are going to work a final decrease. Like so, and then finish off. So what you should be able to see from the side there is that this chest bit sort of curves out before finishing in that little bit of a point. So that is what forms, so that is what, so that is what forms the swell of the chest here. Finishing in a point that you can see between his two front legs there. So at this point, what we are going to do is pop our eyes in and build up the beak just to finish off this piece. Okay, so to position the eyes on your griffin, what you wanna do is count down from the starting magic ring until you hit row six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't need to use pins, I'm just doing it for, the, for the sake of showing you guys what I'm talking about. So that's row six, and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side of this little beak opening. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
So that is roughly where we want our eyes positioned. So you see there we've got the front rows we're going to be working into. The eye is level with the top edge of that beak because it's in row six. You should have one stitch visible between the eye and the beak itself. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. So. And that's where I want my eyes to be. Now you can attach the beak first and work out your eyes later. I just like to do it in this order. Snap your backs on. I worked out the trick to these eyes is to have the little eye sinker up the opposite way to the way I was trying to force it last week. So I'm back to being a strong independent woman who don't need no grip strength. So those are the eyes attached there. Okay, so next up we are going to grab our beak and feet color and we're going to be attaching our beak. So this is just a reminder of what that ends up looking like. And like that, it's firmly attached around the base and it's got this nice little sort of hooky point on the end. And look a little banana-esque if you squint. So I'm going to start by attaching my beak color to my hook with a slip knot. Now, when you attach your yarn onto the head, you can do it however you're comfortable. I always use a standing single crochet for that kind of thing, but you can also slip stitch, chain one, and then single crochet over the top of the whole thing if that's what you prefer as well. So as mentioned, we have this little square of front loops available to us, and I am going to be joining my yarn in the bottom left-hand corner of them when they're facing me. So that is this one here. there is my first stitch so the next stitch I'm going to work into is the middle stitch directly above it so we're at two and then that's the top left hand corner when they're facing me like so I can now remove that entire bobby pin I'm going to turn my work so I'm just looking at the other two front loops available in that top row. So I'm going to work a single crochet in the middle one. That's my fourth single crochet and then one into the corner. And again, I'm just going to remove that bobby pin at this point because it's kind of done its job. That's the top corner. I'm going to rotate again and I'm going to work into that middle edge front loop and rotate again. And there should be two left, both in the bottom row. And we're going to work in that corner first and then the middle last remaining one so you should have worked eight stitches in total around and it should form this little newt newt circle so there we go and we only have one more row to build so starting by working into the first stitch that we did in our beak color we are going to work a decrease and then two single crochet the decrease brings us to our final two stitches and in those we are going to work a single crochet then I'm going to chain three very very tightly and slip stitch into that first chain so that forms a little pico and then single crochet into the final stitch and finish off so to make this all sit correctly we're going to take the tail of our yellow and weave it through the remaining front loops the whole way around. So that should be six in total. Pull it tight to close like a little reverse magic ring. Then if it needs it, just encourage your Pico to face downwards. It should pretty naturally point that way, but if it needs it, just grab it and pull. You tuck your ends in as neatly as you can. There is our little hooked beak. Now, if you don't like the look of the hook, just leave out the Pico but still work the final single crochet. I apologize if you can hear the car alarm in the background. There is literally nothing I can do about it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna soldier on, so hopefully it's not too annoying. So at this point, we are just gonna take a little stuffing and stuff just the head portion. We will be stuffing it more later on once it's attached to the body. But for now, it's nice for it to hold its shape a little bit so it can judge you appropriately if you're taking too long to finish him. I'm looking at you, anybody who puts projects away on a shelf for weeks on end. And now so is he. Good car. Um, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna pop the little beak dude to one side. So underneath all of this, you may not be able to see it properly. There is kind of this bean shape that forms the main body nugget. And that is the piece we are going to make next. It attaches to literally every other piece on our gripper. 
So this time I want you to grab your lion color, which for me is this kind of brownie gold. And we are going to work up that little bean. And finish off. So you'll see there we've got a tiny little opening with six stitches around in it. Use the remaining tail and weave that through the front loops the whole way around. And pull tight to close. Just give it a little poke to flatten it back out. We don't want a pointy end. And use your hook to weave that whatever's left of that tail inside the body. So there is your main body peanut or however you want to think about it. So the flat edge is the back and this curved underside, this is part here is the chest and then this part here is sort of the, the stomach. So next up we are going to make these little chicken drumsticks because griffins have eagle front legs and lion back legs. So the way they start is in the center of the foot, then we build up kind of a little bit of a claw and we change to our eagle color and make the rest of the drumstick. So grab your beak and claw color and you're going to start by working up a magic ring of six. Just like that. And now we are going to do one of my favorite combo stitches, which we used for the nostrils on the Pegasus last week. And that is a triple crochet in the front loop and then a slip stitch into the back loop of the same stitch. For anyone who needs a reminder, a triple crochet is when you yarn over your hook twice, you insert it through the stitch, in this case, through just the front loop, yarn over and pull up a loop. That should leave you with four loops in total on your hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two, and then yarn over and pull through the final two. So there is your triple crochet there like that at the moment. It's not looking like much of anything. Then we kind of fold it forward, insert our hook through the back loop of the same stitch we were just working into, yarn over and slip stitch into it. So that will give you kind of this little bobble sticking out. It's kind of similar to a picot, I think, but I like these better just because I feel like they give me more control over the final shape of the stitch. So there is our first one, and now we're going to do one in each of the next two stitches. So triple crochet in the front loop only. Fold it forward and then slip stitch. That's our second one, and then a third one. Fold it forward and then slip stitch. So there are our three front claws. So now we are just going to work a single crochet through both loops, which brings us to the back. It should be centered between the three, so at the back there. We are going to work one final claw. Triple crochet in the front loop, fold it forward and slip stitch into the back loop. So there we have four claws and one stitch left in our round, which we will just put a single crochet into. So there are our four little claws. So three at the front, one at the back. So kind of the way they look there. I'm going to trim that off a little bit shorter because otherwise it's going to annoy me. And in the next round, we're going to be working six single crochet around. Now be careful when you're working this round to only work into the triple crochet loops and the single crochet loops. We don't work into the slip stitches. So that's a slip stitch. We're going to skip it and work in the loops of the next triple crochet. So that's two. That's the slip stitch, we're going to skip it, work into the triple crochet instead. Three, slip stitch we're going to skip, single crochet is there. Four, five falls into that triple crochet. Then we have our final slip stitch that we're going to skip and work our sixth single crochet there like so. So that should really lock in the shape of your foot. Now you're just going to work two more rows of six single crochet around. I apologize if the editing looks a little weird on this section. That's because I I'd forgotten a row and I went back and did it. So some of the examples might still be showing the old version of the foot. Like so, and I'm gonna tuck that tail in. 
And we're now just gonna change to our eagle color to work up the rest of the drumstick. So here I've got my white. And you should always change colors in the stitch before you need the new color to be active. So what that means here is I'm going to frog that last stitch I did in yellow, and I'm going to work it as a color change instead. So insert my hook, yarn over and bring up a loop. So I've got two loops of my old color on my hook. I'm gonna hold that color out of the way, grab the strand of the color I'm changing to, and pinch that at the base of the stitch so that the tail runs off in the same direction that I've just moved my old color in. Yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook, and then tug your two tails until it is sitting nicely. So what you should have is a full finished single crochet in your old color, but your new color is now on your hook ready to go. So in this next round, you're going to work six front post single crochet around the leg just to get a really nice clear definition between the claw and the drumstick. So front post is when we work around the post of the stitch from the front back to the front. So you'll note that you've got loops on top that we're basically ignoring and instead we are working around the little stem. Just inserting our hook into the holes between the stitches instead of through the stitch itself. So there we are, and now we have our new round of just the white stitches that we're going to work into. So in our next row, we're going to work just six single crochet around again, like so. We are then going to work three repeats of a single crochet and then an increase. Which should bring your total stitches in the round up to nine. So now we just need to build up a little bit of height to our drumstick. So we're going to work three rows of nine single crochet around. Like so. Then in your final round, you're going to work three repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease. Then finish off without stuffing. So once again, we have our little opening at the top that we're just going to close off. So there is your first griffin leg and you are of course going to need two. Now that is both helpful and mildly disturbing. Thank you. So uh, yeah, I guess uh, there is our second leg. So we can pop those to one side now. So next up, we're going to be working up his lion legs. So they start at the base of the foot and then they work all the way up to the top. Now that we get this shape by loading increases first along this edge while loading decreases along this one and then swapping and putting our increases along the front and the back to get the little spoon shape at the top. So that's what we're going to do now. So grab your lion color and work up his back legs. And with just two rows to go, I'm gonna take a little bit of stuffing and just stuff up to this point on the foot. The rest of it will be left empty so that it can sit flat against the body. Then just work the final two rows and finish off. Once again, we're gonna just close off this little opening and tuck the end away. So there is our finished back leg. And then we do need two of them as well. So just like that, pop those to one side as well. So next up, we're gonna make our wings. I do just wanna say that uh, I did, there is a 10 minute long segment basically in the Pegasus video showing you how to make these exact wings. So I'm a little hesitant to give another 10 minute tutorial on making the exact same thing. So what I thought I would do today is just very briefly go over it. Still have the pattern showing on the screen, but in the cards at the top of the screen and in the description down below, there'll be a link to the timestamp in that video. And if you need any additional help with them, I suggest going over and checking that one out instead. So grab your eagle color. So these wings start by working up three rows to get to 18 stitches around. So just like that, you're then going to chain one and fold the circle in half which should give you nine pairs of stitches. And we're going to work in through pairs of back loops only. Just starting right up near where our active loop is. And work three single crochet into the first pair and then a slip stitch and just repeat that four times. 
after there is our first repeat. Second. Third. Fourth. And in the final pair of loops, we are going to work another slip stitch. So what that should have done is sealed the edges of your circle together to form the little taco shape and you've got four feathers around but you've got spare front loops on both sides of the wing. So what that's done is also left a row of front loops free on each side of it. Because we'll need to be making a left wing and a right wing, one will be worked with these feathers facing away from us in these front loops and one will be worked with these feathers facing towards us in these front loops. But other than that, they are the exact same instructions. So today I'm going to be making the one with the loops facing me on camera, and then I'll be making one with the loops facing away from me off camera. So I'm going to start in the front loop closest to my most recent slip stitch. And I'm going to slip stitch in that one and the one next to it and the one after that. <laughs> and then we are going to start working up the first of our six larger feathers. So we do three small ones and three big ones. So the first small one is chain four. Then turn and work back into the chains you've just made and put in three single crochet. So then slip stitch into the next front loop along. So there is our first small feather and then we're going to build our next one. So chain four, turn and work three single crochet down. So then slip stitch into the next front loop along. So we're basically going to repeat that process to make the next four feathers. So one more small and then three larger ones. So just like that, don't mind too much if your feathers are a little bit crumply at this point. So I have put my slip stitch in the final front loop and then just to hold that largest feather straight later on, I'm going to insert my hook just through the gap of the next closest stitch along the top of the tucko and work a little slip stitch there as well. And that's just going to help hold this main top feather in line with the straight edge of the wing. I am then going to finish off. So you can give your crumply feathers a little bit of a tug and they should stand out pretty straight like so. And then I'm just going to tuck this tail away down inside the wing as well. So I do just want to reiterate, if you need any help with these wings, please check out that other video. The links are available down in the description. So the edge that goes against the body is this edge that we did the slip stitches into, uh, or the edge with the shorter feathers, if that's easier for you to spot. Now you are just going to need two of those as well. So there we go, sorry. Sometimes they stick together and they're a little hard to separate, but there we have it. Pop those to one side. Now we have very nearly all of our pieces at this point, but the one piece we are missing is the tail. Now I do just want to add that I have been making my tails all in one colour, but you can use an additional colour if you want to make sort of the tail brush a different colour here as well. Or you can just finish off at this point and attach a little tassel as well. Kind of dealer's choice, but this is the piece we are making today. So to make this final piece, grab your lion colour one more time. And we're going to start with a magic ring of six. We are then going to work five rows of six single crochet around and sometimes that's easier just to count as 30 stitches in total. Just like so. So at this point I'm just going to tuck this tail away inside. We're not going to stuff this piece but we do tuck our ends away inside it. So in the next row we are going to be working three decreases around. And if you wanted to attach a tassel instead of finishing the paintbrush the same way I am, you should uh, finish off at the end of this round. And if you're changing colours, change colour in the final decrease of this round. Three, so that leaves you with just three little stitches in your round and that's it. So of course what we're going to do in the next round is put an increase into each of those three stitches for, to build us back up to six stitches in total. And then we are going to work three repeats of a single crochet and an increase to get us up to nine stitches.
We're then going to work nine single crochet around. Then three repeats of a single crochet and a decrease. And then two repeats of a single crochet and a decrease. And finish off. So you should have four stitches left in your round and we are going to just weave that tail through all of them. Front loops only to close off any little opening that's remaining. And tuck that end away inside. And there is your finished tail. Now we're just going to bring all of the bits in. And we're going to approach this construction in three stages. So first we'll attach the head and body together, then we'll be doing limbs and tail, and then finally we'll attach the wings. So move everything but the head and body out of the way for now. So we're going to start by grabbing our body peanut. Now starting at the fat end, identify your starting magic ring. And what we're going to do is mark where row seven is at the top, so along the back, and along the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's row seven at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That is seven underneath. So those are the two points we have marked at the moment. We are going to grab our griffin head and we're going to grab the point at the bottom of the chest and line that up with the pin we've just put in the underbelly of the body. Basically, we are pinning that corner of the chest to row seven underneath. Curling the chest around the front and lining the back of the head up with row seven on top. And again, pinning in place. So there is our rough head position and now what we want to do is go around with some pins and just reinforce it. So I'm going to start with the back of the head. I'm going to pin along that entire row there because we want that sitting nice and flush. So now we have that fastened down flat. You'll notice that you should have an air bubble basically in the front of this chest. That's good. We're actually going to stuff that as we sew it. Instead what you should focus on rather than making that sit flat is a nice smooth curve of your white against your lion color on one side and on the other basically just pin it where it wants to sit so yeah i've literally pinned it so many times around the edge there just to lock that in place and now what i'm going to do is just grab some of my eagle color and we are going to sew down around that edge so i'm going to start in this corner here and work around the chest first and then I'm going to pause when I've got the back of it open and just chuck as much stuffing as can fit through that opening before we finish off. So with that done, I'm just going to take a moment and weave all of my ends in. And there is the head and body all attached to each other. So next up we have our legs. So with your eagle legs, note that the three claws go at the front and the thumb claw goes at the back. But other than that, there is no right and wrong way around for these claws to go. Either one can be left or right. And what you want to do is count one stitch back from where your eye is. So basically even with the front of this ear. And you want to line the front of your little chicken, chicken leg up with that. So I start with just one pin in the middle. Do that on both sides. So again, one stitch back from the eye and line up front of the leg with that. This is because you want the chest to like protrude proudly out in front of where your legs are, whereas for the Pegasus you wanted more of a flat chest. So one leg, one pin again. And the reason I'm starting with just one pin is then I'm going to stand him up and pivot those legs so that they sit the way that I want them to. And when I'm happy that they're both kind of even and flat and they'll stand up okay, I'm going to put two more pins in each because the triangle is the strongest shape and we'll hold it in position just like that. So we're going to do our back legs at the same time. Now when you look at these back legs what you'll notice is that we have this flat edge that sits at sort of the back of this reverse knee. So we have a flat edge and then it sort of has a point at the top and the foot at the front and all these other bits and pieces but this flat edge is the important bit because we're going to line that edge up in line with the back of the body. So you see how we've got like the visual back of the body and we're lining that flat edge up with it. Stick one pin in. The point should be roughly level with the top of the body, just slightly under it. And then you're just going to like pivot that leg until it's sitting flat with the others. Once again, three pins, triangle, 
and flip. Grab your other leg, identify that flat, and line that up with the back of the body as well. This griffin is a little longer than I normally make things, but uh, not mad at it. He just gets to be a little bit of a long boy. So then of course you do the stand test, make sure all four limbs are touching the ground. Now one of my back legs is not. So what I'm going to do to adjust it is take out all of his pins with the other three legs all standing and lower it till it's touching the ground. Pin it back in place. That is where our legs go. So what I'm gonna do for each of these is basically sew them on around the shoulder and hip joints. So I'll be starting anywhere that they are adjacent to the body and stitching the whole way around until they separate from the body again. So that's what you should do now. Then we're just going to take the tail and attach it to the middle of the centre back and then pin the wings in place just behind where the white of the neck is on either side, making sure that the frilly sides face outwards. And we're just going to sew all three of those pieces on now. And there is your finished griffin. So there is your little griffin. I hope you had fun making him with me today. As for next week's video, I'm just going to say be careful what you wish for. Okay. Bye.